Hello ladies, gentlemen, and everyone in between. I'm the keeper of stories, the story keeper indeed. I help, I hold stories of classic and tales of new. Today I bring you five amazing tales. The first one I have is of Hansel and Gretel. Father, Father, where are you? Hello? Father, Gretel, I think we're lost. You have to keep looking. I left the crumb trail, but I think it disappeared. What do we do? Oh my, two lost delectable children in the woods, all alone. Don't you say that you're lost? Yes. Well, how about I help you find a way home? You will? Absolutely. I don't think this is a good idea. But she said she'd help us find your way home. Now we all come with you here. Wonderful. Now it's getting quite dark out here, so we should be heading back to my home, which is just this way. So, come on, let's go. I don't think this is safe. But she's going to help us find our way home. Oh, you okay? Wonderful. No, I have a wonderful gift for you. Now I made two bowls of food for you guys. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> So good. This is the best food I've ever had. Really? That's wonderful. <laughs> now eat as much as you want, okay? Is there anything we can do to show our appreciation? Oh, yes, absolutely. Since you guys are ready to eat in those bowls, how about you guys make the cleaning? Wait, oh God, let's say the party go over there. <laughs> And since you all are doing such a wonderful job, I shall award you by letting you stay here for the night and for tomorrow. Only the Lord is the Lord who. Are you sure our father might be looking for us? Oh, but I overheard that your very crowd of trails might be gone. So, now you got time to go out when it's dark out there too. So you might as well just not do that. And um, here are some pillows right there, there are some blankets, we can go to sleep, okay? Now, here are the beds. <laughs> oh. I had a live human child to eat.
Here you go. Do you not know who I am? Or what will become of you now? I can't really say know who you are or what you really mean. I am what you people call dead. I hate people from this world. Frankly, I cannot make an exception for you, despite your kindness. However, with said kindness, I will make sure to send my messengers to you, rather than attacking you directly. Oh, well, that's good. At least I'll know of your arrival. I'll make sure to stay safe from you until then. Three years have passed since this encounter. Ah, oh, this illness, I just... I just sleep deprivation and pain. I just, I just wish it would go away. <laughs> I don't know what to do. He, I, I, but I cannot. I cannot die here. He, he said he would send his messages to me, and I haven't seen any of them. It's your time to go. What? You, you're kidding. You, you said you'd send your messages to me, and I haven't seen any of them. Silence! I don't go back on my word. You think I'd be a traitor to my own job? Dare you accuse me of such accusations? Have you not been sleep deprived? Have you not been feeling physically ill, almost as if you're dying? No excuses. Your time is nigh. I understand. The next story I hold is the story of the somewhat tale of Rapunzel. Is, is this even right? Our story begins in the tallest tower in the land, surrounded by grass, trees, and a small stream at the base of the tower. Sounds beautiful, right? But here's the catch, because what kind of fairy tale would this be if there wasn't a catch? What kind of show do you think I'm running here? This isn't some cheesy rom-com where the guy gets the girl and blah, 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 blah. So, back to the point. There is no door to enter or to exit the tower. But don't fret. I promise everything is going to be just fine, I think. Oh, why am I stuck in this tower? What did I ever do to deserve this? I mean, I did disobey the Queen's orders. But it was for a good cause, I think. Oh, I'm perplexed. I don't know how to escape. It's too scary down there, and I'm so scared of heights. As you can see, Mr. Tumnus is utterly terrified of heights. Ironic, isn't it? How do I get out? Oh, I don't know. I guess I'll just play my flute. Named his Pam flute Pamela for some unknown reason. Pamela, how could I do this? Oh, we played such good music together, and I just threw you out the window. I miss you so much. Please come back. Well, we'll see how that goes. Okay, I need to find a way to get back to my beloved Pamela. But how? I can't jump out the window because. I'm scared of heights and I can't get out. There's no doors. I don't know how. <sighs> Clearly, this is going so well for him. Okay. Pamela. Pamela, I'm going to get you. I promise. As you can see here, we are not getting very far. And I think he's going to have a breakdown pretty soon. Pamela, how could I do this? We did everything together. And I just threw you out the window. I didn't mean to. I promise. I swear. These are troubling times in Mr. Tumnus's tower. I thought you're wondering just what's going to happen next. And to be honest, I think I am too. Oh, Pam, 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 Pam. Do you miss me like I miss you? Do you remember when we used to play all the music for all the folks? I don't know how to get out. How am I supposed to leave? 
I guess I'll just... Well, wasn't that interesting? Well, our next enticing tale is the tale of the rich man and the poor man. Frederick is a video gamer, and he makes no money. He has been streaming for seven years. His father, a very good lawyer, gives him an allowance of $100 a day. Duff is also a video gamer, but he only does videos and works 40 hours a week for less than minimum wage. His reputation has been destroyed since he was a child because his father was a mass murderer. The strange thing is, the two gamers have, have bottom floor apartments right next to each other. One lives in a lavish, decorative apartment, while the other apartment is barely furnished and the door could barely be closed. One day, the two guys compete in a tournament that had very particular rules for the statewide competition. Placement was one point every 20 deaths and two points for kills. You had to add your real address to enter for some unknown reason. As the first day ended, a mysterious message popped up on all player screens that in order to win, you must complete a special bonus round. There is a bonus for the next game's round that involves you as the player behind the screen. Is that so then? Well, then I'll win. How interesting, I wonder. Well, I wonder what he means then. The night before the game. I wonder who that could be. Hello, who are you? someone such as you into my home. Maria then walks over to the neighbor's apartment next door. She knocks loudly and the door opens and she finds Duff standing there. What did you run away from? actually in high school. She worked for the gaming company that's hosting the competition the next day. I, sp I suppose you can, but I have a business to attend to tomorrow for a tournament. Thank you. The next day at noon, there are only two hours left before the game and an hour of practice needed to do well. I refuse to lose! Not 
win the bonus points. Bonus points are awarded to Player Duff, who wins first prize. Not only did Player Duff place second in the finals, but he showed kindness in taking care of a stranger. Congratulations! No! Why? What? How? How? Congratulations. Your money will be transferred at, at the end of the week. Have a nice day. Yes! I won. It seems like we have time for one last tale. And the tale is going to be The Devil and the Three Hairs. There was once a poor woman who gave birth to a little girl, and as she came into the world with a strange birthmark on her wrist, this mark was fated to be good luck. It was then in her 14th year, she, was, she would have the king's son for her husband. Those 14 years have passed, and it was time for the girl to go to the kingdom to, and show proof of her fate. Blasphemy is this? Why do you speak of such atrocities? <laughs> Very well. If you seek my son's hand in marriage, you shall find me a quest. A quest to retrieve the three golden hairs atop the devil's head. The three golden hairs you shall have. And so, Tiana went on a journey to retrieve the hairs. The walk wasn't bad in and in it of itself, but soon complications arrived. At the gates of the underworld, there stood the ferryman of the underworld. Stop! Who goes there? Tis I, Tiana. I have been sent on the quest by the queen. May I have access to the devil? Very well. You may pass if you fulfill my quest. What is the quest? You see, I have been here rowing for so long, and I want to live, not to row. Find me a suitable replacement. After I finish my task, I shall find you your replacement. Shall we go? Yes, let's. Tiana arrives at the devil's doorstep and knocks on the door. At first, it seems like the devil isn't home, but after a while, the door finally opens. Who goes there? Your barber. <laughs> I didn't order no barber. Yes, you did. Well, I guess I did. After the very short haircut, Tiana pockets the three hairs and receives a small bag of gold as payment. Tiana then discreetly leaves and goes back to the castle.
mother-in-law, I have received the three golden hairs from the devil and a pocket of gold nuggets. Hmm, very well. You shall have my son's hand in marriage. But might I ask, how did you acquire such gold? The fairy man had wanted a break from running from his whole life. I had given the, him the opportunity to rest. And in return, I have received gold coins. You can do the same. Haha, -ha, easy money. Well, I shall be off then. Enjoy my son. And she was never seen again. Well, this seems to be the end of our tales. It's sad to see it so soon, but I am the storyteller, and I am out. And now for our senior night. We're going to just do a quick little thing to honor each of the seniors that we've had participate in Drama Club over the years. The first one I have is Michael Beards. So Michael did not even realize he was a member of Drama Club, but per our rules, by showing up and helping out with this, you are now an official member of Drama Club. Thank you for helping out. We That's certainly awesome. appreciate your contribution. I know it was an immense amount of time you had to put in. Thank you. We appreciate you being here. Thank you very much, Michael. Next, I have Kyle Rising. So Kyle joined, how long ago? Two years ago? Were yeah, two years ago. Two years ago. So Kyle joined two years ago, quickly became a stage manager for us, actively working behind the scenes, always there whenever I needed him to do something, though sometimes we had to make sure he was there to hear the phone calls, because sometimes we missed some of those. One time. He was always an, a very positive force of energy for the club. You will be sorely missed. We wish you could be here longer. I'm sorry you didn't get to follow through with your promise of auditioning for the show but we appreciate your contribution for this. Thank I got this. Thank you. Next up, Aspen DeSantis. So Aspen is constantly doing things for us behind the scenes. She is the one who is always making sure that I don't forget things, because I always do. I am always expecting to get some sort of email, communication, conversation, just say, hey, Miss Rowe, you forgot this. Hey, Miss Rowe, you forgot this. Hey, Miss Joe, you forgot this. So eventually I told her, if you're going to do this anyways, audition, be in the shows, take over whatever leadership roles you can, and she's been a very active member for the past couple years. There will be no one who will ever try to get me on track the same way that you do. Thank you very much for your contribution. Up next is Hannah Brigham. Hannah is one of the ones that has been around since my very first time taking over. There are only a couple of members that still meet that requirement, being here since my very first show directing. And I have seen Hannah grow immensely. At the very beginning of your time with us, you could not face the audience. You could not project. You struggled with following directions. You were scared you were going to forget lines. And none of that's true anymore. You have come a long way. You are certainly your own biggest critic a lot of the time. But I appreciate your passion, your dedication. You have been an amazing member of Drama Club for the past couple of years, and we will never have someone quite like you on Drama Club again. Thank you very much. Up next is Parker Hinckley, who is also a member of the group that has been involved since my first time working with the club. Parker did take a step back this year due to everything. I completely understand that and respect his decision. But Parker is always the one who is making sure everyone has a smile on their face, doing everything he can to get people involved, active, having a good time. If someone's having a bad day, he's always there in normal years giving them a hug, giving them a pep talk, talking about food, doing everything he can to just bring the energy up. You have been in a variety of roles. I have pushed you so much over the past couple of years, and I'm thankful you stuck with me throughout everything. And I wish you the best of luck in your future. Thank you. Can I thank you? Sure. And last of our seniors who are present is Tiana Savino, who also is the final remaining member for this year that was in my inaugural show that I directed for. You have been here forever. I have put you also in such wildly different roles, it's actually insane, from being villains, being like the sweet little kid, pretending you're someone much younger than you actually are, forcing you to come home early from wrestling so that you can be here for a performance. You've done everything, and you've always done it with a smile. You've always done it with an energy that cannot be replicated. You always are a star on the stage. I hope that you do this in your future. 
I wish you the best of luck and thank you very much. Thank you. I also want to help we also did have two seniors who could not make it, so I just want to quickly say we also wish the best for our remaining two seniors, Nate Cardley and Adrian Paternoster. Thank you very much.